tightening. The latest poll in that state shows Clinton with her seven point advantage over Donald Trump. But her campaign is hoping that some big names will help shore up that support there. CNN's Miguel Marquez is live in Manchester with more. Miguel, what are you seeing there? Well, those polls are tightening here, but the question is whether or not they are due to the normal tightening that happens in these races, or is it down to the email scandal? That poll was taken last Wednesday through Sunday, so only captured a couple of days of uh, the email issue for uh, Hillary Clinton. Of course, both sides saying that issue works to their advantage. Granite State Republicans hammering away. Way at Clinton's email issues. There's a, a culture of corruption that she's brought to the Democratic Party from top to bottom. Thank you so much for your vote, David. Democrats say the FBI's bombshell has only hardened support, turning out more volunteers for Clinton over the weekend. And the voters you're hearing from, the people you're talking to, it doesn't. They're not asking about it either. New polling shows a tightening race, a fierce fight for New Hampshire's four electoral votes. Clinton still up by seven points, but just just a couple of weeks ago, she was up by 15. Tuesday, Clinton bringing in her biggest help, Bernie Sanders, kicking off his nationwide tour for her with two stops in New Hampshire. The differences between Secretary Clinton and Mr. Trump are day and night. And last week, it was Senator Elizabeth Warren, a favorite among liberals, firing up women. Well, I got news for you, Donald Trump. Since clinching the nomination, we love New Hampshire. Trump has visited New Hampshire nine times. Hello, New Hampshire. Hence, four, hoping the email revelations could put the state in play. But we still have only about uh, less than 80 percent of Republicans saying that they're going to vote for for uh, Trump. He needs to have 90 percent plus of the Republicans saying they're going to vote for. Him. With more female than male voters here, Clinton running well ahead of Trump among women. Her campaign now targeting men as well. And what I've often heard men say is, I have two daughters, and I want them to be able to grow up and have every advantage. Both campaigns running full bore. 1.4 million door knocks and 1.3 million calls for Republicans. Democrats counter nearly 600,000 individual doors knocked and more than 2 million calls in this tiny state. What the craziest I've ever seen. <laughs> this election anything possible. The electoral college map is in a mess. I mean, you have uh, Hillary going to red states, you have Trump going to blue states. Now that fixture of New Hampshire politics, John Sununu calling it like it is. One thing that haunts Democrats here is what they call the ghost of 2000. That's when New Hampshire went for George W. Bush. They say that had it gone Democratic, as it has been trending the last 20 years or so, uh, Florida wouldn't have mattered and history would have been very, very different. No one taking any chances here. Chris? Ifs, ifs, ifs. All right, thank you very much, Miguel. Appreciate it. Why did the director of the FBI reintroduce Hillary Clinton's emails without knowing anything new? And does a file dump about a Clinton pardon from 2001 shed light on the answer to that question? Phil Mudd is a CNN counterterrorism analyst and a former CIA counterterrorism official. He also served in the FBI. And we have David Gartenstein Ross, a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and a counterterrorism expert. Phil, you got experience with the FBI. Yep. What is your take on why the director came out now so close to the election with all this talk of custom of not doing that? Pretty simple answer, Chris. FBI walks into the office. The agents walk into the, to the, to the director's conference room and give him a choice. Mm -hmm. You, Mr. Director, in July said that there wasn't anything further to pursue, that there wasn't going to be a criminal prosecution. So you leave the electorate with the concept that this is a dead issue. You either allow that misperception to live when you've decided to allow the FBI to investigate these new emails, or you come out now and say, we're going to take a look, even though maybe in a month you're going to have to say, we still found nothing here. It's a rock and a hard place. Well, but that's that if. So let me bring that to you, David. Uh, Mudd's assertion is you can't leave the electorate with a misperception. Isn't that what he just did by coming out and saying we're going to review new emails that he doesn't even know, as of the time of that disclosure, whether they're even significant to the case by his own admission. I think it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't uh, situation that he's in. Uh, on the one hand, if it does prove to be significant to the case, 
um, then the amount of political firestorm by him withholding that information until after the election will be enormous. On the other hand, um, it has uh, actually swung people's opinion. So uh, it could have the effect of, of misleading people as to the significance. Um, I think it's a very difficult decision to make. As uh, you know, of course, Chris, you've had three former attorney generals, both Democratic and Republican, uh, criticize Comey's decision uh, on the basis that uh, it's within 60 days of the election, so he should have waited. I think there's merit to that, but I also think that the decision that he made was not a politicized decision, uh, and I do understand why he made it. So, taken in a vacuum, you see it rock and hard place. Then, the FBI dumps a bunch of documents about Bill Weissmeilen. No, I haven't finished yet. They, <laughs> they dump a bunch of documents from former President Bill Clinton's pardon of Mark Rich and say it's a FOIA request, and that's why they did it. They're first come, first serve. Uncompelling explanation? Boy, look, as a guy who doesn't have much hair left, this is a bad hair day in the FBI. If you want to claim that the FBI director went to the public affairs office and to the people who review classified information and said, hey, let's, let's hatch a conspiracy, Within a week of the election, release all this information from 15 years ago. No way. That's so how do you Hollywood. explain it? I think this is an tells him. I can't talk about Trump and the Russians, even though we have several different layers of inquiry going on, because I just don't feel that there's enough there. And I'm not going to do it with the election going on. In fact, I don't even want the FBI yeah. on the disclosure to the American people that the Russians hacked the emails. I just I don't want to get into that. I don't want that to be about the FBI. But he does come out and having not even reviewed the emails yet, speak on the exact issue that can sink Hillary Clinton. Look, Explain. Let, let's look at the, these two separately because they are separate. This is not a package deal. The Hillary Clinton issue, you've got information that indicates wrongdoing. That is classified information and the FBI has to decide whether to prosecute. Let's contrast that. That was before when he said we looked at it and Correct. we have no case. Correct. And he gave the Americans the impression that was a done deal. Now let's shift yeah. over to the Trump issue. Here's the press conference. Let me tell you, American people, let me report that I have nothing to report. That's what he just said, though, when he came out and said he was going to look at more emails from Wiener's laptop. No, what I'm saying is in the Trump issue, it's not clear that there's any fire behind the smoke. In the, in the Clinton issue, there was. I think the two, the two cases are clearly separate. Well argued, oh, yeah, Phil Mudd. David, quick button, got to go. I have to agree with Phil, uh, because when, when you look at the Russia issue, right now it's basically the intelligence community that's looking into it and doing the uh, sophisticated uh, digital forensic analysis. It hasn't yet uh, become as much of an FBI issue. And also, he testified before Congress on the Hillary issue. He hasn't on the Trump issue, so he doesn't have the same sort of obligation to report to Congress. Strong points, very compelling, of use to the audience, and I direct them back to both of you. Mud's not on social media. <laughs> Smart move. But please, take your complaints to David Gartenstein Ross. There's only one online. Thank you, gentlemen. There is a lot of news this morning, including something that we have to keep very intense focus on. There was a deadly ambush in Iowa. Two police officers were targeted. We have the information. Let's get to it. Obamacare means higher prices, fewer choices, and lower quality. I am sick and tired of the negative, dark, divisive, dangerous vision. For any Democratic voter having a bad case of buyer's remorse, you can change your vote to Donald Trump. The American dream itself is at stake. Hillary is not the victim. The American people are the victims. Why does he do these things? Who acts like this? I'll tell you who, a bully. This is New Day with Chris Cuomo and Allison Camerata. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your new day. Up first, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump making their closing arguments. Clinton going after Trump's character and lashing out at what she calls his divisive vision. Donald Trump staying on message, staying off the news shows. Do not screw up that message. He's saying Clinton is crooked and Obamacare has to go. He's also making an interesting pitch to Clinton's early supporters. He's saying, hey, if what, Judge, uh, what Comey just said or didn't say made you change your mind, Vote for me. Only six days to go. Let's begin our coverage with CNN's Phil Mattingly in all important Florida. Phil. Uh, good morning, Chris. For four days, all the Clinton campaign advisors were talking about was Jim Comey. They were attacking him, trying to undercut the premise and the rationale for that letter sent to Capitol Hill. No more. Here in Florida, yesterday, Hillary Clinton trying to turn the page. The reality here is this, the Clinton campaign recognizing that as we head in to this final week of the campaign, it's a lot better to be talking about Donald Trump. Take a listen to what Hillary Clinton had to say. 
Yes, he calls women ugly, disgusting, nasty all the time. He calls women pigs, rates bodies on a scale from one to ten. Why does he do these things? Who acts like this? And I'll tell you who, a bully. That's who. Guys, very clear. The Clinton campaign wants a referendum on Donald Trump, not James Comey, not the FBI, not Hillary Clinton's email server. We also had an interesting moment yesterday here in Florida where Hillary Clinton lashed out, kind of showing her frustration with a specific Donald Trump related protester, but also Donald Trump in general. Take a listen. I am sick and tired of the negative, dark, divisive, dangerous vision and behavior of people who support Donald Trump. Now, the interesting element of that, that moment brought more of a response from a crowd than we've seen for a long time, really firing up her supporters there. And that's going to mean a lot in these last couple days. Obviously, it's all about getting out your coalition if you want to win on November 8th. The Clinton campaign focused very hard on that today. Look across the map where all of the surrogates are going. Joe Biden comes down here to Florida, President Obama to North Carolina, Elizabeth Warren, Nevada, Bernie Sanders, Wisconsin, Michigan, trying to hit those labor voters that the Trump campaign thinks they can pick up. But look where Hillary Clinton is. Arizona. A red state, a state that Democrats traditionally don't look to, let alone send their people towards in the last five, six days of the election. The Clinton campaign, seeing early vote turnout amongst Hispanics, believe that's not an expansion of the map. That's a true battleground. And guys, you know very clearly, if they win Arizona, this race is certainly going towards Hillary Clinton, trying to help push that forward today. Guys? Phil, appreciate it. Don't get sunburned down there in Orlando. Donald Trump staying away from TV interviews to stay on message. Trump making waves with this call to early voters saying, you voted for Clinton, now change your vote. CNN Sarah Murray live in Washington with more. What is it? Seven states where you can actually do that. He was in Wisconsin where I think you can do it up to three times, right? That's right. You can do it in Wisconsin. It's only a handful of states and it's rare for voters to do this, but Donald Trump essentially making the pitch that, look, we've learned more in the last few days and it's not too late to change your mind and back Trump. Take a listen to what he said. This is a message for any Democratic voter who have already cast their ballots for Hillary Clinton and who are having a bad case of buyer's remorse. You can change your vote to Donald Trump will make America great again, okay? Now, the fact that Donald Trump made this pitch in Wisconsin is an indication of how the campaign is trying to branch out into more Democrat-friendly territory. They say they're going to spend $25 million on the airwaves, including in a number of blue-leaning states. And if you look at their travel schedules today, you get a sense of how they're continuing to campaign in those places as well. Mike Pence, for instance, is going to be stopping in New Mexico and Colorado. Those are both states that appear to be leaning toward the Democrats, but the Trump campaign is hoping to put in play. But Pence is also playing a little bit of defense. He's stopping by Arizona. This was red, but it's shaping up to be a little bit more of a battleground. Now, as for Trump, he is going to be in Florida, a pivotal state for his campaign. His advisors say he's going to be pretty focused on the economy today. Back to you, Alfred. Okay, Sarah, thanks so much for all of that. And joining us now to discuss it is Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. He is a Clinton supporter. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Allison. Okay, so let's try to take the pulse of where the Clinton campaign is today. Is it fair to say, based upon her tone out on the uh, campaign trail and her words, that she is feeling more frustrated and even anxious than she had hoped with a week left? Well, I think Secretary Clinton would like to be spending this last week focusing on her positive message, on her record, on her experience, and on her plans for how to grow the economy from the middle out, how to restore American manufacturing, how to keep us safer and stronger abroad, and how to strengthen education yeah. and opportunities for the working class so here why at not home. Focus she on that. really would rather be having those arguments than the arguments that are going on. I was just out in the field campaigning in North Carolina and Wisconsin, uh, and I met a lot of people who are fired up to get out there and vote early and frankly a lot of people who are ready for this election to be over look they say if you want to know how something's going follow the money right so if you follow the money in terms of where she's buying ads there are some interesting choices um, there are going to be new ads running in new mexico and michigan why focus on those sort of more traditionally blue states if if the campaign isn't feeling anxious right now 
Well, Allison, I think they're trying to make absolutely certain that the states that have been in the column for her for months stay in that column, and there's no opportunity for Donald Trump to sort of break out of her blue firewall. Um, we've invested a lot of money and time, had a lot of surrogates going to states in recent weeks that are reach, that have historically voted Republican, and I think, as is always the case in campaigns, uh, the gaps have been tightening a little bit in recent days, uh, and so they're investing funding in advertising and in sending surrogates to states that I pretty reliably believe will vote Democrat in this presidential election, uh, but also where there's important uh, state elections, federal elections as well, uh, and where it's a good idea to make sure that we've, that we've secured the base. Look, you say the polls are tightening. In the new ABC News tracking poll, that's the daily poll, they are exactly even. I mean, it's a dead heat, 46% to 46%. How do you explain how at this late date it is this tight? Well, Allison, what I saw on your show earlier this morning uh, was that a state-by-state -state analysis, not a national analysis, but a state-by-state -state analysis, uh, shows that Secretary Clinton um, retains an important and comfortable lead in some critical states like New Hampshire and Pennsylvania and even North Carolina. Um, so if you go through the Electoral College math, which is the math that going to matter uh, on election day next week. Um, she still remains ahead of Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, but it is concerning um, that mm -hmm. this is a campaign that's turned into one more about negatives than positives. And to be clear, we want to show the CNN poll of polls in case any one poll is an outlier. We crunch the numbers of the top five polls. And here you see Hillary Clinton still with a lead, 47 percent to Donald Trump's 42 percent. Senator, what do you make of what is happening with the FBI? Not just the letter that Director Comey sent to Congress, but this this next thing, this next surprise, as it's being called, this tweet that was sent out with a link to a long dormant account at the FBI that suddenly revealed these heavily redacted documents about Bill Clinton's pardon of Mark Rich more than a dozen years ago. What do you think is going on with the FBI? Allison, I, I looked into that. I read some articles about that last night, and I'm, I'm deeply puzzled. Uh, the FBI and the Department of Justice have long-standing practices of not commenting on investigations underway, on not commenting where there isn't sufficient information, uh, and of avoiding public comment when it might have undue influence on an election. Uh, reporting suggests that uh, James Comey, the director of the FBI, declined any public comment on the investigations into Donald Trump's ties, his campaign manager's ties, uh, to Russia earlier this summer following that long-standing practice and I think that's a, a good practice and has stood as well so I really was surprised by what you're referencing this um, unjustified unexplained release of now long outdated uh, emails about a long closed investigation um, James Comey was involved in that investigation uh, when he was with the Department of Justice in a yeah. previous role uh, but it just sets a, a troubling pattern and it's my hope um, that our public confidence in the FBI uh, will be restored I am certain uh, that this latest revelation of some trove of emails uh, that uh, may or may not even be related to Hillary Clinton, may or may not be duplicates, may or may not be personal, yeah. we really don't know much about it, and apparently neither did Director Comey. I'm confident that will amount to nothing. And ultimately, um, voters who are going to the polls today, this week, and up to next Tuesday will be making up their minds on which of these candidates has a stronger vision for our future. Yes, they sure will. Senator Chris Coons, thanks so much for being on New Day. Thank you. Let's get to Chris. All right, so Hillary Clinton's campaign is debuting a new ad, once again using Trump's own words as an attack against him. This time it's about treatment of women. Here it is. Putting a wife to work is a very dangerous thing. 
When I come home and dinner's not ready, I go through the roof. Grab them by the And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. More accusers coming forward to say they were sexually assaulted by Donald Trump. I'll go backstage before a show. Yes. And everyone's getting dressed. Donald Trump walked into the dressing room while contestants, some as young as 15, were changing. All right, with the uncomfortable task of uh, dealing with uncomfortable information, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, senior advisor to the Trump campaign. It's an obvious ad, um, but it also has an obvious negative. How do you deal with it? Look, I think Hillary Clinton is looking for any distractions she can find. She's had one of the worst weeks, probably the worst couple of weeks that any campaign has had this cycle. You've seen Obamacare skyrocketing. She is under criminal investigation by the FBI, not just herself, but also the Clinton Foundation. She's looking for any distraction she can find to distract voters from talking about her bad week, her failures. And uh, I think that this is a new low in American politics that she's going only to focus on personal attacks. She's got no rationale at this point why voters should be voting for her. And so she's going down uh, the road she, she Originally, campaign she wouldn't do. Well, the and I think it shows the desperation in her campaign at this point. Well, it's certainly tight on both sides, and that's why it's all negative all the time. Nobody's saying anything good about themselves, they're all saying something bad about somebody else. Uh, the simple proposition there is this is what the guy has said, and this is what the guy may have done. Know that about him. Can you deny any of that? He certainly apologized for the things he said, and look, I can't verify any of the other. Uh, accusations out there but what I can verify is that Hillary Clinton's record is one of nothing but corruption and scandal uh, just weeks ago talking about how he's a man of integrity a man of honor and the second he doesn't agree with them they start going after same thing you guys are doing that's the Democrat play the same thing though. you guys are doing Trump said horrible th would you like me to read them to you what he said about Jim Comey do you want me to read them to you no, no you don't right <laughs> yeah well, lucky but you didn't say him because we'd have a different conversation but now he loves him now he says the FBI is back. Comey's well, I great. think that's because there was so much there that was being ignored. And I think the American people demanded for answers. And I think that's why Comey is now coming out and saying, look, we've got to review this further. There obviously has to be something there. People want to know. They want answers. And I think he's done the right the thing reason, by at least opening it up and searching for those answers. The reason I'm checking you carefully on this is there's no question. If you have emails, you have to review them. Comey could have done it differently. He didn't. Okay. That's, that's his part of this conversation. You're not here from him. But Donald Trump is going around the country saying, the truth has come out. Now we know. Boy, thank you, Huma. Thank you, Anthony Weiner. What does he know? What does he know that we don't? Because Jim Comey told us. Well, we don't know what it is. We're going to look at it. What does he know? What's well, in I also think you have to look at some of the things that have come out in WikiLeaks. I mean, just moments before the story breaks, Podesta's email very clearly uh, lays out, we've got to get rid of these emails. They knew something was coming. They knew they needed to cover it up. I mean, this is a big He didn't scandal. say cover it up. This is a problem. No, I she was wrongly using a server. It was wrong. Right. Illegal? No, according to the FBI. But wrong, damaging, definitely. What if I had your emails about what you guys talk about inside the campaign about how to deal with different situations? I think you'd probably be pleasantly surprised oh, at, at my emails, Chris. Lay them on me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got a lot of pictures of my kids. If you got some spare time, we can oh, sit and please. I'll show you all of them. Sarah, God bless the kids. Do not <laughs> expose them to this process. Thank you for joining you us. Thanks Six for days being to here. go. Stay healthy. Allison. All right, Chris, we want to turn now back to that breaking news out of Iowa. A terrible story. Two police officers shot and killed in separate ambush attacks in the Des Moines area this morning. There is a massive manhunt underway for the killer at this hour. CNN's Jean Casares joins us now with all of the breaking details. What have you learned? And Allison, the Des Moines Police Department is saying this morning there's definitely a clear and present danger for all police officers in the area. This happened a little after 1 o'clock this morning. It was in Iowa, Urbandale. They got, a, they got a call that shots had been fired. So officers arrived at their scene. What do they find? They find one of their own who has been shot dead sitting in his patrol car. Other officers come to try to assist him, and about 20 minutes later, Des Moines officers just happened to find one of their officers at an intersection in his patrol car shot dead, 20 minutes apart. Listen to the press conference. We've got some of that earlier this morning from the Des Moines police officers. In all appearances, it looks just like that, that these officers were ambushed. It um, 
on the surface right now, just like I said, we're just a few hours into this. It doesn't look like there was any interaction between these officers and, and whoever the coward is that shot him while they sat in their cars. Um, that's the best we got that we can explain the scene right now. Um, both of them were in their cars. So they are still trying to put together a profile at this point of what this suspect or suspects may look like. They haven't come out with that, but there is definitely a manhunt to try to find exactly who did this. And they are pairing the officers up now. Uh, in Urbandale, they only have 50 on the force, but they're pairing them up and they're saying that there is somebody out there shooting police officers and we have to find them before other officers are killed. This is horrible. How can they even know who they're looking for? Do we think that there are surveillance videos from somewhere around? The Urbandale has body cameras. Des Moines doesn't. But if you're ambushed, how much would a body camera actually show? Yeah. Now, this is going to be tricky. And also, you know, there have been calls for a long time now uh, to harden the cruisers, uh, give them bulletproof windows, uh, you know, make these more secure environments for them, not in anticipation of this, but just in general. This has a horrible, horrible familiarity to what they dealt with here in New York, wound up being that mentally deranged guy who came up and killed two officers in their car, cold-blooded murder. Yeah. It also casts a shadow on what's going on with policing in this country in terms of cops being victimized. Last year, 120 23 cops killed on the job. This year to date, 111. Now, you include these two officers, um, 113. But more killed this year by firearm than all of last year. Gene. And to be ambushed is really even a more selective number. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Gene, thank you, and please come back when you have any more information yes. about this. All right. So, both presidential candidates have big supporters uh, and also big opponents. So how does that wind up creating advantage or disadvantage? Who wins on that score? Next. Are you missing out? Surrogates barnstorming key battleground states today. Clinton is shifting her focus back to Donald Trump's character and away from renewed scrutiny over her emails. So what will energize voters in the next six days? Let's bring in CNN political commentator and former Donald Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski and national spokesperson for MoveOn.org, Corinne Jean-Pierre. She is a Hillary Clinton supporter. Nice to see both of you. Corinne, let me start with you. As we heard on the trail yesterday, Hillary Clinton has gone back to talking about Donald Trump's character, the offensive thing things that he has said about women. If she's trying to appeal to, say, swing voters or, it, or undecided. Day isn't actually on November 8th. It's actually happening right now. And what she's doing is she's giving that character argument, right? She and her surrogates are out there talking about why Donald Trump is unfit and really putting out on the line what, you know, what's at stake in this race. So I think it's actually incredibly important for, for her to do that. Are we going to hear, Corey, today, Donald Trump counter-punching, as he likes to do, about these attacks, or is he going to stay with a laser-like focused message on, say, repealing Obamacare? I think Donald Trump's message for the next six days is why he should be elected president of the United States, why he's going to bring fundamental change to Washington. And if you look at the recent polls that have come out, and you look specifically at how Hillary Clinton is doing with white women, particularly white married women, she's losing to Donald Trump in that particular demographic. If you look at how the African-American turnout is not turning out at the same level that we've seen in the last two presidential election cycles, that's very concerning for Hillary Clinton. So she has to prosecute a case against Donald Trump because she doesn't have a case to vote but for. But you're telling me that you think, knowing Donald Trump as well as you do, that he will be able to resist the counterpunch for which he is so famous. Look, you know me, I, I'm, a, I'm a counterpuncher kind of guy myself, and I love when Donald Trump counterpunches, but I think with six days to go in this election, if you look at what he has done since Friday when the FBI came out and said we're going to reopen an investigation right now, he has been very precise. He's been very concise. He's out talking about what his plan is for America, which is let's fix the health care system. Let's stop our national debt growing. Let's get our jobs moving. Let's bring back, you know, let's fix these bad trade deals. Look at the states he's going to. He's in Michigan. He's in Wisconsin. He's in Colorado. He's in New Hampshire on Friday. 
places where there's an opportunity for him and his message has resonated with typically a state that a Democrat will carry, he has a real opportunity here to win. Well, we see him on television more. He's been a little bit invisible in the past few days since all of this broke. Well, I think relatively speaking, he's doing three rallies today in Florida. I think he's got another one tomorrow in Florida. But, you know, in sit-down interviews. Well, look, I don't think Hillary Clinton's doing a whole bunch of sit-down interviews either right now, to be fair. Corinne. What about well, what, Cor hold on, what about yeah. what Corey just said in terms of the enthusiasm with black voters? That in terms of early voting, that does seem to be down. How big of a concern do you think that is? Look, I mean, I think it's a bit unfair to compare a historical figure as Barack Obama uh, to, to the numbers from 2008 and, and uh, 2012. But with all that said, yes, they need to turn out more, more of the early voting from the black community, and they just need to keep their gas on, on the, on, you know, the ga their foot on their gas to do that. But here's the thing: just looking at yesterday, for example, Hillary Clinton and her supporters were in 14 media markets. Donald Trump and Pence were in one media market, which is Pennsylvania. I mean, so there is something to say about that. Like she actually has the surrogates and the and and the you know and the backing to really reach out to these voters that she needs to. And also with early voting, it is trending positively for for Democrats. Right, we're doing better. There's a survey. There's a Florida survey that came out last night that looked like, that looked at early voting, um, and it showed that it showed like 28 percent of the GOP of Republicans that are coming out to vote were actually crossing over and voting for Hillary Clinton. And if that stand, that would be hmm. astounding, right? Because both both John Kerry and both uh, Barack Obama, they got less than 10 percent, respectively, from the GOP hmm. uh, uh, voters. So I think that was really important. And also, 50, she was winning early voting by 53 percent in Florida, which is a state that we all know. If if Donald Trump doesn't win that state, there's really no path for him at all. Corey, you know we, what? We just need to clear up one thing. Donald Trump was not just in Pennsylvania. Yes, he also did a massive rally in Wisconsin last night, and his sons, which you know, it's a amazing that no one talks everyone every time uh, Chelsea Clinton's on the campaign trail she's this great surrogate for her mother and, and she gets that credit Donald Trump's kids don't get that same credit you know Donald Trump jr. was in Ohio yesterday his son Eric was in North Carolina his daughter-in-law has been on the trail Melania Trump is on the trail this week Ivanka Trump is on the trail you know I don't see that on the map of the surrogates of where Donald Trump's surrogates are so look if we're gonna compare apples to apples Donald it's Trump was in Pennsylvania and he was in Wisconsin, and he's done three events in Florida today. And I think if we want to put his schedule up against Hillary Clinton's, he does more events more times a day okay, than anybody else. Why isn't that apples to apples? It's not apples to apples. You ha you're talking about Vice President, Vice President Biden. You're probably talking about President Obama. You're talking about Senators Warren and, and, uh, and, and Sanders. You're talking about... And, and Senator uh, Ron Johnson and Scott I mean, Walker yeah, and all the others no, that are campaigning the same. for Yeah, Trump. Scott Walker, he does this, this event with Scott Walker yesterday, first, you know, first time in a while. I mean, it's, not, it's just not the same. It's yeah, not I mean, but the same I mean, but, but Corrine, Donald Trump hasn't been in public life. He can't have those sorts of high-level no, surrogates. No, Well, that's because all those high-level surrogates are running away from him. I mean, that's what is happening because of Trumpism, because of what he's putting out there, because of the hateful rhetoric that he's been putting out there well, for Kareem 18 makes a good months. Point. Oh, Kareem, hold on. Kareem makes a good point. The previous um, nominees, GOP nominees and presidents, are not rallying to his side. And in fact, there was a report that Jeb's son said that he believes that his grandfather, George H.W. Bush, and his father, George, um, his uncle, uh, George W. Bush, are likely going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Here's what we saw yesterday. Donald Trump is getting right now about 86% of the Republicans that are voting for him, which is a higher percentage than Hillary Clinton is getting of Democrats right now. His numbers continue to increase. Her numbers continue to decrease. So at the end of the day, Mike Pence talked about this. Republicans are coming home. States like Arizona are going to be off the table. You know, it was a week ago, a week ago, where they're saying Hillary Clinton is going to win in Texas and Hillary Clinton is going to win in Georgia. You know what they're saying today? Hillary Clinton is going to Detroit, Michigan on Friday because she is so desperate to keep that state that Allison. she has to go and campaign there with four Last word, Corinne. Allison, a couple of things. Here, the fundamentals of this race has not changed. Hillary Clinton still has multiple paths to 270, while Donald Trump is still trying to co cobble up one path to, to 270, and that is just the state of the race. Now, granted, yep. the, the Democrats need to keep their foot on the gas and not leave anything on the table, which is why she's going to Michigan. And the last little, the, the, yep. the 72 hours post that letter from Kami, yep. uh, Hillary Clinton campaign raised a $11.3 million. So they're not Got leaving it. anything on the, on the floor. Honestly, Green for it, Green for it. No, left. you're not going to have this last <laughs> word. Election Day is almost here. And you can join us next Tuesday for Election Day in America. We have every race and every result covered. You can stay with CNN until the last vote. There's a lot of people with a lot of feet on a lot of gas pedals.